Nothing really surprised me that much until I hit Jane Nelson on the worst list. And I actually texted Emily Ramshaw, who reports about health for the Tribune. At that moment, I went, Nelson? Question mark, question mark, question mark. And I have to say that I still don't fully understand it. You indicated to me it's in the write-up. Let everybody here understand what that means. I asked a lot of people, as I did about all the members, how they thought Jane Nelson did, how they thought Senator Nelson did this session, and specifically how she did with her main task, which was, of course, the subcommittee for finding savings in Medicaid, cutting Medicaid. And I, I think the person that sort of hit the nail on the head and was the most insightful comment for me was a longtime lobbyist and political consultant, someone who considers himself a friend of Senator Nelson, said, um, for Jane, it's not about the policy, it's about the politics. And I, I think that helped me understand and helped crystallize why her experience on that Medicaid subcommittee was such a frustrating one, and it was a frustrating one. The, the committee was a disaster. It, for, for, first of all, it was poorly run. You know, it, would they be, it essentially consisted of her floating a number of ideas for cuts to Medicaid. Those ideas would be poorly received, not just by her Democratic colleagues, but also by Senators L. Tyf and, and Duell, her Republican, more moderate Republican colleagues. And, and the next day it would be another set of suggestions and it would go on like that and it, eventually the whole thing practically came off the rails and, and Senator Nelson got really frustrated. And I think the source of her frustration was that for her, it was fundamentally a set of political decisions that needed to be made. And for her colleagues, it was about policy. First of all, she doesn't know the policy area as well as she should after 10 years of chairing Health and Human Services, and that became evident if you were watching that committee going on. But it was, it was more fundamental than that. For her, it was a chance to prove that fiscal conservatives in the face of uh, you know, a devastating financial crisis can find cuts, can cut their way out of the problem. And I think what she learned is that you can't always do that. And I think that's why that subcommittee was such a frustrating experience for her. And ultimately, you can't lay this all on Senator Nelson, but what the budget does on Medicaid, in the end, what we did was, was irresponsible. We essentially punted on Medicaid. We, so, we, so that to say that we're not spending the rainy day fund for the next biennium is just a fiction, because eventually we're going to spend it. We're just not going to admit to spending it right now. Yes. Yeah, we've obligated it. Right. For, they're, they're, they are now admitting that they have failed to fund $4.8 billion in caseload growth in Medicaid, and that will happen. Well, they're, they're, they're betting on the come here effectively, right? They think that, well, maybe things will work out. Yeah. yeah. Well, yes, but like in, they're betting on the come in education, too. They're saying uh, property values are going to go up. Well, anybody out here looked at your appraisals? Are they going up? No. Yeah. No. And and, you know, it's, it, it's just a completely phony bu budgeting there. You probably remember the moment that really sort of crystallized Senator Nelson's session was the night of, of the budget debate on the Senate floor. And Senator Whitmire had been saying all session long, let's put a face on these cuts, trying to remind his members that each and every time you cut something in the Medicaid budget, it affects a real person. Yep. And not just a person, but some of the weakest among us, disabled children, elderly in nursing homes. And Nelson said, well, her job was to put a face on the taxpayer. And you could feel the cringe in the room. And not just from the Democrats, but from some of her Republican colleagues, too. You know, first of all, it seems to assume that people who are on Medicaid don't pay taxes, which ignores the fact that we have a very regressive taxation system here in Texas. Sales tax funds a large part of our economy. And of course, everybody pays that. But the other thing it suggests is that taxpayers in Texas are already overburdened, leaving aside the fact that we are we spend the least per capita of any state in the nation, and that we already have one of the leanest Medicaid programs in the nation. And it just sort of reinforced what she has essentially become in the Senate, which is a sort of a party whip for kind of the, the right wing of the Senate conservatives, which is fine if, if you're writing the budget you know, for parks and wildlife or you're regulating the oil and gas industry, but is that really the person that you want making those crucial decisions about health and human services? Okay, that's, that's the rationale for Nelson. Okay.